everybody welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna show you how to mock up on two different images and I'm gonna use something very simple this week next week we're gonna do something a little bit harder this week I'm just gonna show you how to mock up this image right here the one I did on Instagram and everybody loved um, but the easy part about this is it has a super white background so if you guys do lettering um, if you do watercolor art and you want to mock up your art on a piece of paper on your desk or on a wall or in a frame or wherever and your background of your artwork is super white this is how you're gonna do it okay let me turn that off open up your mock-up image on your photo in your Photoshop uh, make sure it's all set the colors are nice and everything so make sure that's all good make sure that's all cleaned up like I see a little dot here that needs to be cleaned up but we'll cover that in a different video but the first thing we need to do is bring in our art so you can just if you have it like on your desktop right here like I have or opened in a window you can just drag it over that's what I usually do I just grab it and I drag it right on top Oops. drag it right in there and now we're just gonna scale it down okay so grab before you press anything uh, once you bring it in just scale it down hold shift if you need to now this depends on your um, Photoshop which update you have which you know version of Photoshop you have if you hold shift it'll constrain the proportion so that it's not becoming like squished like this so make sure you hold shift and the beauty with the white piece of paper um, or a white art with white all around here is that if it is too small or too big for the piece of paper that you're mocking it up on it's easy to get rid of that white it'll just disappear because it's pure white now if you have color on there if you're bringing in art that goes edge to edge like like you know like a landscape painting that goes edge to edge um, it's a little bit more difficult and we're going to cover that next week uh, in my next week's video but for this week we're just going to keep it very simple okay so i pressed enter to kind of set it in place if you mind you this these are all made out of pixels so if you scale it down way too small and then you press enter or that check mark and then you're like whoops it's too small and now you want to stretch it back out it's gonna be a little bit more pixelated than it was before it'll be all like you know just not that great <laughs> it won't have the greatest quality so i'm gonna delete that and bring it in again and scale it down to size not smaller okay so I'm just gonna place it right in the center and I'm gonna hit return or enter or that little check mark that's up there and I'm gonna leave it now you just go to your layers window so if you don't know where that is go to windows layers and your art mine is called monstera because obviously it's the monstera leaf so your art should be on the top layer and then your background which is your mock-up image should be on the bottom okay so once you have that go to this right here where it says normal it's a drop down menu choose multiply and it'll get rid of all that harsh white and make that white be the white of this image okay so now you're done that's that's it you're finished now you can just save it export it save it as a jpeg whatever post it on instagram and you are done and it looks really really nice now the beauty of having that super white background like we have right here like really white is that you can make this image bigger and you won't see that white see that because we hit multiply so if you have it on normal you will see all that white but once you click multiply it kind of gets rid of the white and makes the white be invisible <laughs> so that's really why we do it also we do the multiply because of shadow things and I'll show you why in a minute 
All right, so now we're done with this. If you guys know how to save, go to save, um, save as, if you wanna save it as Photoshop or save as um, any other thing, JPEG, whatever. If you're saving this for web, if you wanna like post it to your website, even to Instagram, you wanna make it web image smaller because you need to make them small. Go to export and then save for web. And from here, you can choose your pixel width, which for web 2000 is kind of big, um, unless you're making it like your background or something. Um, bring the quality down to medium or even low. That is plenty for a web image. Don't make it like maximum or super high. Try to do it low and see how it is. Low might be a little bit pixelated. It's not pretty, it's not that good. You, If you click two up right here, you can see the original image and you can see the optimized image for web on the right side. So you can see that low gets a little bit pixelated. It's not that great. So maybe just go up to medium, at least medium. I'd say you can then bring up the quality up a little bit. I usually leave mine around like 50 something to 60 and that's usually really good for web. And that brings down the size a lot. Um, so that your website's not loading forever because we don't want that. So that's my one tip. Go to save for web from Photoshop. Um, okay. So we're going to open up this photo and we're going to mock it up here. This is the one that I did on Instagram that everybody loved. And I'm going to do it again here and I'm just going to talk over it so you guys can understand what I'm doing. So again, bring in the Monstera JPEG or the easiest way is to just open up like finder or a window in windows i really don't use pcs guys i haven't used a pc with photoshop since high school 15 years ago so and that was like the last time in college i had a mac so i don't really know a lot about pcs and things <laughs> um but i'm sure you can figure it out it's very similar um so i'm gonna grab my image and just drag it right on top and just drop it there. So now before you click anything, before you click any check marks or enter, just rotate it just so that it kind of matches. So obviously it's not gonna match exactly, but just as long as it's kind of there, um, rotate it like that and then click enter. Don't do anything else for now. Click edit, transform, I do distort. You can try playing around with skew depending on how, what the angle is that your art, that your photo is taken at. Oh no, my mouse died. Oh, hold on guys. We're going to have to charge this baby first. I'll be right back. All right. It's a little bit charged. We'll try it. Um, I know I talk really, really fast. <laughs> so if you guys miss anything or have any questions, let me know. Or if I do talk too fast, let me know. Um, and I'll make more, I'll, I'll be making more of these videos. So maybe in the next video, I'll talk a little bit slower and explain, um, any things that you guys have questions about. Um, so just let me know. Um, all right. So like I was saying, oh, okay. So this is skew. See, like skew is a little bit odd. It might work. Sometimes it doesn't work and you have to go to distort. Skew, you have to kind of go at weird angles and stuff. It'll work. It just takes a little bit of time to figure out how to do this with skew because it's like weird. Um, but it'll work. So just try it with skew. Now it depends also like what the angle is that you're photo is taken at and all that kind of stuff. So distort or skew, play around with both of those and see which one you like better and which one gives you better results. I did this one with skew. The one I did on Instagram, I did with distort and I'm pretty sure they look both fine. They both look fine. <clears throat> so now just click this little check mark again or press enter on your keyboard. Um, and this is almost done. But one issue is we have a out of focus area on our image. So you can see, I can't really zoom in here, hold on. You can see that this area on the bottom and this area on the top is out of focus. 
um, this middle area right here, right here, about an inch of that is in focus because I was taking that photo at a very low depth of field. So it gives you that blurriness, that blurry effect. But this image, when you place it on top, does not have that. So we have to like fake it in. We have to blur it ourselves. So the way to do that, there's two ways to do that. One way is better than the other, I think. The other way is for like quick little blurs here and there. Um, so I'll show you the way I did it on Instagram. So select your image in your layers. So open up your layers window, select that Monstera image or your own image, um, and then right click on it, not on the little box. Make sure you're like on the name. So don't click here because that'll give you a different menu than clicking like here. Okay, go to rasterize or you can go to image, I mean layer, rasterize, smart object. You can do it that way. That's the longer way. But once you do that, you cannot go back to your transform and skew or distort because it'll look different. Like you can still move it around, but it won't give you all those points on your corners. So make sure that you have your shape down um, before you rasterize it, okay? So this is the last thing you're gonna do. So rasterize and then click your brush in your tool menu. So again, if you don't have your tool menu up, go to Windows, <sighs> Tools right here. If you don't have it checked, make sure it's checked, it'll pop up right on the side here. Go to your brush and then right click somewhere to click here to check your choose your brush size. So my size is going to be about the size of that area that was in focus that was nice and sharp, not blurry. So it's about 300. Okay. And I'm going to make it really fuzzy. So my hardness is going to be zero because I want that fuzzy blurry effect to not have a harsh line. Okay. So we're going to make it zero hardness, 300 pixels, for me, for you, it might be different. Now, um, click outside of your image somewhere to kind of get out of that menu. Now go to this little image right here. This is your mask tool, okay? Or Q on the keyboard. It tells you right there. If you hover over it and don't click, either click Q on your keyboard or this little button right here. Now we're going to select in red everything we don't want to blur, that we don't want to apply effects to, okay? So my area that I don't want to blur is the one in the middle that's like in focus. So right around there, maybe a little bit lower, okay? So that area here is going to be in focus. It's not going to get blurry. The rest is going to get a little bit blurry, maybe a little higher. Okay, so click that image again, that little button again, or click Q on your keyboard to get out of it. Now you can see the top and the bottom are selected and that's what we are going to blur. Now if those little lines, these little marching ants, what you call them, <laughs> is bugging you because you can't see your blur, it's kind of in the way, um, you can hide it. Don't deselect, hide. So Command H or control H on a PC, I believe. Command H is just gonna hide the selection, but it's still selected. So you just can't see that those little marks. Now go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. There's a lot of different blurs here. You can play around with them because depending on your picture, like I said, you might need something different. I use Gaussian blur for pretty much everything because it's, it's pretty good. Here, you can select how much you want to blur. Obviously, the more blur, it's just going to like disappear because it's just going to blur so much. So for me, I found that the three, like around three was pretty good. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Maybe like, I don't know. Maybe we'll do four. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. 
So hit OK. Now you still have that selection selected, so make sure now you deselect it. You can show it again by again going Command H to unhide it. So now you can see your selection if you want to do any other things to it. So the easiest way to see what you have selected is to grab your brush, select the color, and then just you can see that the top and bottom are the ones that are selected. So I'm going to undo that, Command Z. And now I'm going to deselect it, Command D to deselect. Make sure you guys learn your key commands on your keyboard because it saves so much time. So it's Command D, deselect it, or go to Select in your menu and click Deselect. Make sure, take note of these little shortcuts. They save so much time. All right, so this is pretty much done. I'd call it done. I mean, for a quick little mock-up that's just going to go on my website or... Oh, no, wait, it's not done. Hold on. We got to go here to our opacity and change it to multiply. Now it's done. Now it looks perfect. So like I said, for a quick little mock-up that's like going to go on your website or it's going to just go on your Instagram or Pinterest or, you know, something like that, just something very quick, this is the easiest way to do it if you're just doing it one off. If you are going to be doing a lot of mock-ups and a lot of, like if you want to create a template where you're going to just keep bringing things in and mocking them up over and over and over, over a lot, a lot of pieces, then you want to create yourself a template. Um, I can show you that some other time because that takes a long time. Or you can go to my Skillshare class and take my Photoshop class. Um, go to Skillshare and take my Photoshop class. I will link it below. It is older, so... Some menus in Photoshop might have changed. I, I think I did that class about five years ago. So it, it's a little bit outdated. I am working on a update, but if you need to find that out really quickly, I'm sure everything will still work. Um, your menus just might look a tiny bit different because Photoshop sometimes changes some things. Um, and it's mostly geared for lettering artists, but I do teach you how to make mock-up templates in Photoshop. And then I have a course in Illustrator where I show you how to do that as well in Illustrator. So if you want to find that out, go watch that class now. Um, it is coming with an up. I am coming up out, out with an update. So just know that every time somebody watches it, I'm like cringing because it's so old and it just needs a lot of updating. But it, the, the thing still works. So uh, now it's finished. Now I was going to show you this blur tool right here in your tools menu. If you don't see it, guys, click on this little three, these little three dots. Oops. And then click edit toolbar. And from here, you can like drag over the tools that you need because some of them don't show up in your toolbar anymore because Photoshop changed the things around. So if you don't see the blur tool, go here and find it. Um, it's right here. So you can like put it, if you put it in there, you won't see it. So if it's on this side, it's not in your toolbar. So if it's here, just drag it over somewhere <laughs> and then you'll see it here. Okay. And then click done. So grab this one. It looks like a little teardrop, little water drop type of thing. So grab that. Again, with the brushes, it's like a brush. So click on the right side of your mouse, right click, and then you can select the size of your brush, make it bigger or smaller, and then the hardness, of course, or the shape of your brush. You can go crazy. Um, or just use the brackets on your keyboard to make your brush bigger or smaller. That's the fastest way to do it. And like here, I think this little dot, this little watercolor dot needs to be out of focus. Okay. So I'm going to blur it. So I'm just going to grab my blur tool and just kind of go right over it. Now, if it's too strong, you can take your strength down right here but I'm just going to leave it. So you can click or you can like click and hold and just like smush it. Okay. <laughs> Smudge it. Okay. So I'm just going to click a couple of times till I'm kind of satisfied. That looks pretty good. Um, this area maybe needs to be just a little bit more blurred. 
So you can do little tiny blurs with this tool. Now, if you're blurring like a whole image, like I said, use the Gaussian tour, uh, tool because it's filter because it's just easier. Um, this is for just quick little little blurs here and there. Okay, so that's about it. That's finished. It's all done. Again, go to file, save, export for web. If you're doing this for your website, um, it'll save you lots of space and loading time. But that's pretty much done. Now, if you feel like the colors need to be adjusted just a little bit, go to your bottom layer. If you want to adjust this image, go click on the bottom layer. You can have this one selected or I mean showing, just don't select it. So click on your bottom layer and then click Command M or go to curves right here under image adjustments and curves or like I said command M and then you can make this just a little bit brighter if you want to bring out those whites a little bit more and just play with this curve all right so I'm done like I said next week I'm gonna show you how to mock up the same things but with an image like the uh, whoops no 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 but with an image like this that goes you know like edge to edge art um it doesn't have a white background so this is a little bit more tricky to do it requires just a little bit more patience and you know but we're gonna do this next week so i'll show you that if you have any questions in between that, if you want me to include anything or talk slower or talk through more menus and stuff, uh, let me know and I'll just put those in to next week's video. All right, guys. Bye.